of fact, yes, I was born in Southern California. No, I don't surf. Yes, I've had horses, cows, chickens, all that kind of stuff. But having said all that, you know, I just can't wait for summer. You know, I mean, I just love it. I'm ready to just shed it all, put it away, pack it away, and let's get on with summer. I'm ready for the beach. <laughs> I mean, we're starting to get some warm weather here, and it's not even hot yet, because where I'm at, it gets hot. But one thing I've noticed is that with summer, people tend to get off on tangents. They seem to go off in certain directions and do certain things that maybe isn't the beneficial way of acting or behaving like a Christian. And I think one of the things that you know Tozer brings out today, especially in teaching, is that we really have fallen short of the glory of God. We really have lowered our standard over the years and we keep lowering it based upon this whole idea of cheap grace. Because you see, it is true that we've been given grace for grace, that in as much as we are graceful to others, we receive grace. And as much as we forgive others, we receive forgiveness. But at the same time, we've lowered the standard of what we're trying to achieve. We haven't reached the bar and set it high. We don't produce saints anymore. We're producing kind of like wounded Christians that are beat up, blown out, bummed out, and kind of devastated instead of being you know, sons and daughters of righteousness. You know, that we can look at it and say, wow. Man, I may not be, you know, like the epitome of greatness when it comes to looking at like what a Christian, you know, ought to be from childhood up, but look at these, you know, they they actually, you know, were born in a Christian family, raised in a Christian family. They they like, you know, have held themselves back and learned the ways of God and the ordinances of his word and they decided to be an example of a believer, you know, and then they they get married and they have a wonderful, joyful life and as a Christian, you know, they set a standard for us all and we're inspired. And I don't mean the Tim Tebow's. And I don't mean the uh, Jeremy Lin's or whoever else that you may have. Kirk Cameron's for, you know, examples of what you may lift up or elevate as being some type of super saint. No, what I'm saying is we need to recognize that we as sinners, who we are, need to change ourselves. We need to look at who I am and change my ways. Not look at who someone else is and elevate them on a pedestal and then try to imitate them. Because I can't. And they can't help me in that way. What they can do is pray for me, but what I can do for myself is to raise the standard up and say, I want to be like this. you know, And to go after that and attain it. I want to never look at porno on the internet. Now, I would love to challenge every man to say that, because I know most men. Now, somehow, you know, it's just kind of one of those things, you know, they they pretend like they've, you know, clicked on a link, you know, in their email. Oh, well, it just accidentally popped up. No, it didn't. You looked. Be real. And I would like to see, you know, where men said, yes, I did, but I don't, and I won't, and I will not. And they put it aside, because that's a childish thing. When I was a child, I spoke as a child and reasoned as a child would. But when I grew to be a man, but then again, have we grown to be men? You see, I see more people out there with parties, playing games, with guns, playing games, with doing all these things that are not manly, but are childish. You know, why would a, a man of God go out of his way to have these toys rather than be a man of God, doing something that would impact a nation? that would cause salvation to come to a tribe of people or a nation of people or to go out of their way to reach out in some way to touch the nation that would change them forever. No, we want our toys and play on our toys and bring God into our toy room. We want to take God out of the church and the standard of righteousness that he set. And we want to have our cake and eat it too. We want to get God on our Harley and ride with Him into heaven. That's disgusting. We've lowered our standard. Because the same God that said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, died with no Harley. Died with no other sustenance except for the very coat on His back. 
and the fact that he lived as a humble servant of the Most High God, as a son of man, and as a son of God, he should have had everything. But he gave up everything for you. So I kind of wonder, has Christianity lowered its standard? You know, have we somehow said, oh, well, I get to go on my Christian cruise, my Christian Harley, my Christian this, that, and the other thing, because I brought God into that with the world, and I made it part of the world, you know, the Christian world, not the kingdom of heaven, that we could have gone out to another nation, maybe, and saved a generation that might be dying, possibly, in a nation that is not open to the gospel. How many missionaries do you know? How many people look at sainthood or godliness as being, let's raise up a generation of missionaries going out to save the world? Oh, we pray. We have our window of opportunity to pray. But are we sending out more missionaries now? I mean, God bless you, and I'm thankful for Campus Crusade for Christ and Youth with a Mission and all those other ministries that do take mission fields, you know, seriously as part of the church. But how many have we decided that are going to be permanent? You know, I know that uh, Wycliffe Bible translators used to be huge, and now I hear so little about them. I wonder if they still have that following that used to be so great. Because the question becomes, what is our God, and who has He become in our image, or is we or are we becoming changed into His image? Because I know how easy it is to jump on the bandwagon and want to be the Christian musician. <laughs> Man, let's get fame and fortune and talk to God and tell God about it. But I wonder how many people would walk away from their football career like a Tim Tebow in order to serve the Lord. Because I know there, there were some in the military that I think it chose that. You know, They said, I don't want to be that. I want to go this way. I think that God chose us for a better higher standard of living that he wants us he calls us he looks the world over for someone whom he may be strong on their behalf not because they're strong and they want God for him no it's where God sees someone that he could be strong on their behalf for because Jesus made the statement that is very true that Tozer is going to mention probably in this devotional today that we need to examine ourselves about when the Son of Man returns Will he find faith? And I wonder if he meant the faith that was existing at the time that he left. Because when I look around, I wonder what it is that we're doing with our lives. I don't question you if you have a Harley. Between you and God, hey. I don't question if you have a man cave. It's between you and God. I don't question if you watch man answers. Between you and God. I question if you're examining yourself. Because, you see, I'm not going to examine you. I already see what I need to see. It is obvious to me what you are. Because you portray it every day. You live it the way you act. You live it the way you talk. You live it the way you walk. You live it by what you say on the Internet, by what you post on Facebook, by what you share on Twitter, by those things that you do to your neighbor and your enemy and your friend and your loved ones. You see, I already see what you do. My question is, are you questioning yourself about what you do? Are you asking yourself and examining yourself to finding if you are in the faith? Or are you just believing with faith that you're in the faith? You may want to think about that. Because the question does involve salvation. And it's a challenging one that we all need to ask ourselves. Christianity is no longer producing saintliness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3.18 It is possible for a whole generation of professing Christians to be victims of poor teaching, low moral standards, and unscriptural or extra-scriptural doctrines, resulting in a stunted growth and retarded development. It is less than stark tragedy that an individual Christian may pass from youth to old age in a state of suspended growth and all his life be unaware of it. Those who would question the truth of this have only to read the first epistle to the Corinthians and the epistle to the Hebrews and the church history as all the further proof that is needed. If you want to know the truth, 
Look at 1 Corinthians, then look at our society today. Are Christians the example of righteousness? Look at Hebrews, and then look at our world today. And then look at church history and look at our world today. You see, the church, especially people that are individuals that even watching this video, don't want to say, well, we come from a history that goes through the Catholic Church and its history, through the Lutheran Church and its history, through the Pentecostal or through the non-denominational and denominational history, and we're part of that. No, they want to say, oh, no, we just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And we didn't get our Bible from them. We got it from God direct. No, it doesn't work that way. You see, you are a result of all the saints that come before you. You are from the hallmark of faith. You are one of those that you seem to want to criticize, possibly, and deny that you're a part of. Tozer isn't easy. We have to examine ourselves in light of that and question whether we are looking at ourselves or whether we're denying the reality of what God wants to do in our life. In today's Christianity, we have measured ourselves by ourselves and until the incentive to seek higher plateaus in the things of the Spirit is all but gone. How many want to walk into heaven today and come back and talk about what they saw? How many are willing to pay the price of taking up their cross and denying themselves, their flesh, and the reality of how they live to be with Jesus and separate themselves by casting in prayer unto God himself alone without all the other bennies around them. Which of us would choose to set aside that time that we think we need for worship, you know, with our little extra earphones, you know, and extra music, to just walk with God and talk to him today and to just listen to what he has to say? The question we ask ourselves often determines how far we go with God and how far we're willing to admit we fall short of the glory of God. We think we're there because, oh, I saw the glory. It came raining down on my gold dust. No, it didn't. Not at all. Not at all. The fact is that we are no longer producing saints. We are making converts to an effort type of Christianity that bears little resemblance to that of the New Testament. The average so-called Bible Christian in our time is but a wretched parody of true sainthood. I will admit to myself and about others too, it's rare that I find a saint. I find a lot of born-again Christians, and I saw a lot of Christians born of the Spirit of God, but I don't see that hunger and thirst after righteousness. I don't see that desire to follow after God and pursue Him to the utmost with all of their being, which is why we do video, because the question is, I know I don't see them, but I know that they may exist in that uh, criteria, I say, would be that let me give you something to inspire you. Try stepping out of your body into heaven someday. That's something you could do today. Because should you pursue God in a personal way, He said He would come into you and sup with you and you with Him. And that He would walk with you and talk with you. That even as Enoch walked into heaven, so too, why aren't you doing it? What is the problem? Have you lowered your standards and you just settled for the world? And you want to put Jesus with a stamp of approval on what you own and what you are? Then don't watch and don't read and don't talk about Tozer. Don't go after Amos Vidigo because those two are about discipleship and teaching. Because it is challenging ourselves and saying, where am I at? I am the worst of sinners. I am the one who has to change. I have to change me. I have to deal with me. I know I have fallen short of the glory of God. Clearly we must begin to produce better Christians. We must insist on New Testament sainthood for our converts and nothing less. And we must lead them into a state of heart purity, fiery love, and separation from the world and poured out devotion to the person of Jesus Christ. Only in this way can we only in this way can the low level of spirituality be raised again to where it should be in the light of the scriptures and eternal values. As long as Christians can stand up and say with a straight face that they believe in violence and that they can take the gun and shoot someone and extinguish their eternity forever without flinching or even thinking twice about it, then we know we have not done the work that Jesus said. 
as long as there is in the world this justification of any Christian to say that somehow war is a solution, then we have not done what Jesus said. And we have not taken up our cross and denied ourselves. Because as long as we keep saying that Jesus didn't say love your enemies, we're lying to ourselves and denying what we are supposed to be. And we're lowering the level of Christianity to be nothing more than a bunch of dogs barking at each other and biting each other and snapping at the heels of Satan and his world so that we're just one level above it. Just, just enough to try to squeeze into heaven without having to really cost us anything because we're bringing hell with us. You see, we have to examine ourselves. We have to prove ourselves to be in the faith. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling because the reality is we're a far cry from those first century Christians in second and third who were willing to die rejoicing in song when they were cast into the Colosseum to be torn apart by lions. And we're a far cry from those who were willing to march literally with soldiers and then stand out on the ice and die rather than deny Jesus Christ. We have not resisted as Jesus said unto blood. So the question becomes, have we insisted on our own righteousness as filthy rags to be accepted by God when we should be denying ourselves, realizing where we're at as sinful as we are, and changing our ways to reflect who God is, as opposed to who we want to be in God. Think about it. 